friends. It simply defies belief that after five, four months of genocidal slaughter by Israel in Gaza, that this barbaric regime could consider when it is in the dock of the International Court of Justice for genocide, when it has slaughtered 30,000 people, when it has displaced 2 million people, when it has brought the entire population of Gaza to the brink of famine, that they want to commit yet another massacre in Rafa. What sort of barbaric regime is capable of that? It is beyond shameful. When, when is the world going to acknowledge that this is not a normal state? That this is a barbaric state that has no place in the civilized world? We had up here a few minutes ago one of the people that this country can be most proud of, Karen Geeran. And I believe Mary Manning is in this crowd as well. These are heroes who went on strike for two years to force a reluctant government in Ireland to be the first country to impose sanctions on the cruel and brutal apartheid regime of South Africa. Now if, if the world was forced, finally forced, because of the actions of black people resisting that regime and the heroic efforts of people like the dump stores workers to acknowledge that the apartheid regime in South Africa had no place in the civilized world how much more is that the case of the Israeli regime that is guilty of genocide, not just in the last four months, but for decades, that since its foundation was built on the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, on decades of brutal occupation, decades of brutal, cruel, murderous apartheid, the 17 year long siege of Gaza. This is the reason why we have this escalation of violence. But the media and politicians pretend it all began on October the 7th. No, this began in 1948 with the Nakba. It began with decades of ethnic cleansing and occupation and the world ignored it. And worse, and worse, they were complicit. They are complicit because they ignored the desperate pleas of the Palestinian people for justice, for freedom, for self-determination. And it is that complicity, and then worse, of the United States, Britain, Germany, the European Union, arming this genocidal apartheid regime and supporting them every step of the way on this genocidal slaughter in Gaza. So it's not just a slogan when we say Biden, von der Leyen, you can't hide, you are guilty of genocide as well as Netanyahu for arming and supporting this regime and giving it impunity. But I want to say, your efforts are not in vain. Over the last week or two, we've seen the narrative of our government change. Finally, they're starting to acknowledge, because you forced them to, and because the horror that we are seeing forced them to acknowledge that Israel is a rogue state. Well, if they're willing to acknowledge that now, they have to follow it with action. We want sanctions. We want the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador. We want to break all ties with this 
says, if, if we had to boycott apartheid South Africa, how much more do we have to boycott this genocidal regime? Words are not enough now. We need action. We need sanctions. And if there's no other reason, let me mention another person. Zach Hania, an Irish citizen, along with other citizens, are being held hostage in Gaza by Israel. Even that alone should be enough, enough for the Irish government to impose sanctions on this regime. But yet they continue to treat them like a normal state. The European Union gives them favour trade status. It's absolutely shameful. And over the next number of weeks, we have to say too that any Irish politician who dares shake hands with Joe Biden, who is guilty of supporting and arming this genocide, will live forever in shame. No shamrocks for genocide, Joe. And get the US military out of Shannon as well. The last couple of things I just want to say is this. What is at the heart of the cruel oppression of the Palestinian people is racism, colonial racism. Colonialism has no place in the world. Racism has no place in a decent world. And there are also people in this country who are trying to import that poisonous racism into Ireland. And we need to be on the streets on March the 2nd to stand against the poisonous racism of the far right. So make sure you come out there. <laughs> Lastly, I believe we need to mobilise in our tens of thousands before St. Patrick's Day to force all of our politicians into a commitment they will not shake hands or give shamrock to Genocide Joe because of his complicity with this genocide. We can do what Karen Geeran and the gun stores workers have done. We can do it. If we rise up, if we show the bravery and determination of those gun stores workers, we can dismantle this genocidal apartheid regime. Keep fighting.